A small group of scientists on board this plane will fly back and forth across the Sierra Nevada mountains for hours, carefully studying the snowpack, which cloaks its numerous peaks. This snowpack is critical, as it represents approximately 75% of Southern California's water supply. Our civilization out here and our industry, our agriculture, is all built up around reliance on water resources that tend to be remote from us. If it rains here in Los Angeles, it is, I mean, it's great to have precipitation. But what's really important for the state is if it snows a lot up in the mountain basins. Tom Painter is a research scientist with NASA and is the spearhead of a relatively new program, the Airborne Snow Observatory, also known as the ASO. With this program, we can actually know how much water is in the mountain snowpack. We can also know how rapidly it's going to melt. That's critical for understanding how to optimize management of the reservoirs. The fundamental purpose of the ASO is to monitor the snowpack and determine its snow water equivalent. The snow water equivalent is how much water you would have if you took the snowpack that's, say, this deep and you melted it down instantly. How deep would that, that water layer be? To take these measurements, the ASO uses two key pieces of equipment, a scanning LiDAR system and an imaging spectrometer. The LiDAR system works like a high-frequency laser pointer, sending out over 100,000 pulses of light per second, measuring the distance from the aircraft to the surface of the mountain. We fly the mountain basins when there's no snow on the ground. We set a baseline. Then we can come back and fly during the winter time, and then the difference between those gives us a very precise measurement of how deep the snow is. While the LiDAR system measures snow depth, the imaging spectrometer measures the reflectivity of the snow surface, also known as snow albedo. What we really want to know is how much sunlight is being absorbed by that surface of the snow, because that provides about 90 to 95 percent of the energy that goes to melting that snow to that snow water equivalent. This combination of these two instruments is very new in terms of how we're collecting this data and using it to inform the water resource managers. My name is Megan Richardson. I'm the project manager for the Airborne Snow Observatory, and I'm also one of the flight operators who goes out and collects the data. Having this equipment is a real game changer. We can fly an entire survey and cover an entire watershed in just a day. It's just really great to see the return so quickly because typically our knowledge of the snowpack comes from the ground measurement teams going out and taking spot measurements. Frank Gerke conducts manual snow surveys for the California Department of Water Resources. Okay. He works in tandem with the ASO by visiting snow courses and taking core samples to help determine snow depth and density for that area. This has always been sort of my dream job, so when an opportunity opened up for the state in 1987, I, I jumped at it. I've been doing this snow course for most of that 30-year period. The first record of measurements was probably 1906. Dr. James E. Church developed the notion that you could take a core sample of the snow and from the weight, you determine the water content. Each of the snow courses has its own schedule. At this location, we make six measurements on or about the first of each month. What did we find today? Today was very grim. Uh, we had less than one inch of snow water equivalent at this location. The measurements that are being conducted right now show that we are close, if not the driest, March 1 measurement cycle on record. There are over 200 manual snow survey courses across the Sierra Nevadas, but altogether, they only cover a tiny fraction of the basin, far from providing a comprehensive set of data which is why the advent of the Airborne Snow Observatory is so vital. The ASO provides information that simply doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. From a snow science standpoint, it's pretty significant and remarkable at what the project has accomplished just in the three years it's been in existence. In its short history, the Airborne Snow Observatory has provided such an extensive set of data 
that we now know that there is only about half of the total snow water equivalent in the mountains than was previously estimated. We just had the driest January on record, the least snowfall on record in California. The outlook is not great for water resources and this distribution uh, through the state of California and likewise in, in parts of the western U.S. It's grim. Um, we need a lot more snow, a lot more snow. The thing I think about every day when we are working on this project though is the change that we're going to make in people's lives. This is going to be a part of water management and water science from here on out. Our ability to take this information and do something with it is going to help us to make the right decisions in the future. For Science Friday, I'm Christian Baker.